Today is December 27th, 2022. It's the end of the year. This year, I've been mostly focused on the conflict unfolding in and around Ukraine. And I have been talking about Russia and how it has been conducting its special military operation. And over the last year, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about why. Why is Russia conducting its special military operation in this way? Why is it taking them so long just to move uh, a very small distance, say, around the city of Bakhmut, where there is intense fighting taking place right now why why isn't russia able to move quicker why aren't they able to overwhelm ukrainian forces like the u.s did when it invaded iraq in 2003 and so i want to dedicate a whole video on this topic and explain why these are two completely different types of conflicts and if the u.s instead of russia was trying to uh, overrun ukrainian defenses they would be having the exact same problems. In order to explain this, I want to go to the whiteboard and show you a basic example of what Russia is up against and what it needs to do in order to take a single fortified position. And before I go to the whiteboard, I just want to show you on a map with satellite images what these defenses really look like. And so I'm using Defense Politics Asia's map, Ukraine map. Uh, the link will be in the video description below. And we're looking at Bakhmut. So we, we zoom in on Bakhmut. And this is all urban terrain. And so if a trench and fortified concrete bunkers protect troops out in the field, the same goes for heavily built up urban areas where you have reinforced concrete buildings protecting troops. But outside the city, you will see these castle icons, and these are Ukrainian fortified positions. We zoom in and we see this road going from uh, east to west, more or less. And when we zoom in, we see these zig zagging lines, don't we? And they're extensive and they run all along and across this road and in order for russia to advance westward they would have to go along this road surrounded by these fortified positions and it's not just trenches if you zoom in you will see that there are all kinds of structures fortified bunkers subterranean structures you will also notice the zigzagging nature of the trenches so let me go to the whiteboard and I want to share with you uh, an example, a very basic example. None of this is to scale. It's just to give you an idea of uh, how these things are unfolding on the battlefield. Uh, so as you can see, there is this road. Uh, let's just say that Russian forces are starting here in the east. They want to proceed west toward a, 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 an ultimate objective, but they cannot pass this point here. There are Ukrainian infantry dug in deep. These are trenches. And the, the trenches, as you saw on the satellite images, they zigzag and they zigzag for a very specific reason. Uh, when Russian artillery or rocket fire uh, land in these trenches, even if it's a direct, hurt, uh, direct hit, the blast is going to be contained by the geometry of these trenches. The, the blast will not move into the other uh, areas of the trenches. So the soldiers here in this section, if this is where uh, a Russian rocket or mortar or artillery round lands, those soldiers will die. The rest of the soldiers will survive. That is the reason they use these, uh, these shapes and designs when digging these trenches. Uh, they also have trenches multiple sets of trenches, again, as you saw, and they point in different directions to cover different potential uh, uh, axes that Russia may attack along. But as you can see right here, this is the range of, say, uh, a rifle, so around 300 meters, the effective range in, in a firefight th around 300 meters or closer, which it really is not that far when you really think about it they're not going to really be able to hit anything unless Russian infantry are storming into their trenches. So why doesn't Russia just drive tanks down this road, 
storm these trenches and clear them out. Well, we, we have actually seen videos of them doing this, but a lot of work has to be done long before that begins. And the reason why is because behind the trenches, very far back, it, lo it looks very close on this, this is just a representation, you have tanks, which can fire, uh, so this is the range and field of fire of the tank, again, just uh, as an example, between two and a half to four and a half kilometers. So it goes out much further than the infantry's rifles. Behind the tanks, you will have artillery. Again, this is just for an example. It could be anywhere between 12 kilometers to 40 kilometers, depending on the, the gun and the rounds being used. Uh, just for this example, let's just say 24 kilometers, so much, much further out. And then behind the artillery, you will have multiple launch rocket systems. The Grad rocket system, Smirch, which fires even further. This is a Grad, and it will reach about 52 kilometers. So when Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles want to approach this location, they are going to be under fire long before they're even in range of the trench, let alone by the time they arrive at the trench. So the, the best that Russia can do is set up its artillery uh, outside of the range of Ukrainian artillery and outside of the range of uh, Ukrainian multiple launch rocket systems, and they could try to hit whatever they can that way. Or they can move within the range of Ukrainian artillery and multiple launch rocket systems, but when you do that, you're at risk of being hit by Ukrainian long-range fire. So what do you do? You have to dig in and camouflage your position and or you need to frequently move your position so that by the time Ukraine zeroes in on where this artillery fire is coming from, you've already moved to a different location before they start firing at the position they thought you were at. And both sides are doing this. And both sides have equipment that help them do this. Counter-battery radar. Counter-battery radar sees where enemy rounds are coming from. It calculates uh, the exact position where they came from, and then they relay that information to uh, artillery and multiple launch rocket systems and, and other forces on your side to go and then attack those positions. And if they have not moved from those positions, they will be destroyed. Uh, there is something else that Russia has been doing to eliminate Ukrainian long-range fire so that they can move in and storm these positions. They have been using their kamikaze drones. The Lancet drone in particular has a range of around 40 kilometers. A team operating Lancet drones can, can easily come within a firing range of Ukrainian long-range artillery. They are not going to know that they're there until it's way, way too late. They will send their drone. It will find where their firing positions are. Uh, even if Ukraine is moving their artillery in between salvos, uh, Russian counter-battery radar can give the Lancet drone team a general idea of where they might be, and the drone can circle around until they find the new positions that the Ukrainian artillery moved to. And then it'll uh, home in and destroy the artillery and many times the ammunition nearby and also the highly trained crews operating them. And the same goes for Grad, same goes for Ukrainian counter-battery radar. Russia will take those out to enhance Russia's ability to uh, target Ukrainian positions without having to worry about counter-battery uh, salvos from Ukraine. And air defense systems, they're using the Lancet drones and other long-range weapons to take out Ukrainian air defense. Uh, Again, why, do, why doesn't Russia just come in and bomb these trenches from the air? Because Ukraine has a large number of Soviet-era air defense systems, highly mobile systems that allow Ukraine to provide protection for their troops. We're talking about uh, Strela, Asa, Buk systems. The U.S. has sent a negligible number of Avengers. These are Humvees with Stinger missiles attached to them. Uh, if they were in larger numbers, they would also serve this purpose of protecting Ukrainian forces along the front to prevent Russia from being able to just freely use its military aviation uh, when attacking these positions. So as Russia wears down Ukraine's long-range 
fires in a particular area, then they open up the, the chance, the opportunity to storm these trenches. Uh, and they will. They will come in with tanks. They will come in with infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. They will drop the troops off and the troops will go into the trenches and clear them. And uh, it is, it's a very intense, close-up and personal uh, way of combat, but it is one, one of the aspects of this conflict that has been unfolding. This is why Russia is taking its time. Yes, they could just uh, accumulate a huge number of tanks, armored personnel carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, uh, other units, and just storm these positions. Uh, take the artillery fire, take the rocket fire, lose huge numbers of troops, but possibly take these trenches, then they have to secure them. And remember, all of this artillery uh, isn't just providing a fire support for these troops beyond their position. They can easily target the positions themselves if they fall into Russian hands. So these are all things to keep in mind watching this conflict unfold. This is exactly why Russia is taking its time methodically wearing down Ukrainian long-range fire and not simply just storming these positions and taking huge tracts of land. It is a very unsustainable way to wage a, a, con, a, a military operation. You will lose huge numbers of troops and equipment, just as Ukraine did uh, when they launched their offensives around Kharkov and Kherson. So I hope that kind of helps explain why Russia is not simply storming into these positions. Uh, and when you look at the type of warfare that is taking place, this very long range type of warfare, you can clearly see why Russia would have the advantage if it has more artillery, more tanks, more rockets, more missiles, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles like the Iskander, which is essentially Russia's version of the Attackums Ukraine keeps asking the US for, only it fires even further. Attackums has a range of 300 kilometers. Iskander has a range between four and 500 kilometers. Um, think about tanks. Uh, you remember the story of the Canadian sniper, Wally, and the last mission he went on before he returned home to Canada. Uh, he was actually hunting Russian tanks with the Javelin anti-tank missile. The range of these tanks are actually uh, further than the Javelin. Uh, this tank killed half of his team uh, while he was unsuccessfully trying to hunt this tank. It has infrared imaging it can see in the dark, it can see in bad weather, and it can hit very precisely. On the first hit, on the first round, it killed uh, two members of his four-man team. And uh, that's what sent Wally home. And just imagine this unfolding on a very large scale all across the line of contact. And then another reason why Russia wouldn't want to storm these positions when say you have a weapon system like a tank that is capable of hitting a target precisely on the first shot from kilometers away you storm into a city with these tanks you are closing the gap for the enemy who is at the disadvantage now their weapons which were out of range now they're all in range. This is what happens. And when you're in an urban environment or you're in among a network of trenches, you saw how those trenches uh, cover a very large area and different trench systems overlap in terms of their fields of fire. Uh, so a tank coming into one of these trench networks, you are putting it in range of all of these weapons uh, that had been out of range uh, when you were across the field. So why, why would you do that? Why would you do that unless it was absolutely necessary when you were certain that you knocked out all the anti-tank positions in and among those trench networks and knocked out the heavy weapon systems uh, behind them that could hit these tanks on their way in? And this is exactly what Russia is doing. It's what it's been doing uh, in the very beginning of the conflict. Russia did storm into Ukraine. Uh, but then when things stabilized, they shifted toward a strategy of attrition. And that is what they have been doing ever since. And so considering all of these factors, what I just showed you at the whiteboard, uh, it becomes clear why Russia is taking its time. It also becomes clear why when people ask me, is Russia getting ready for a major offensive? Are they going to try to storm deep into Ukrainian territory and take 
dramatic swaths of territory. And I think not for all of the reasons I just explained. They will not begin using their, their tanks, their artillery, their rockets, and their missiles in a way like that until they are certain that Ukraine's capabilities have been degraded to a certain extent. An example of this that has already unfolded during this fighting was the fighting around Mariupol. That is a coastal city. Russia surrounded it. It eliminated the heavy weapon systems the Ukrainians had. And they were able to actually even come in and do heavy bombing in positions where Ukrainian troops were dug in. The Azovstal Steelworks, for example, was heavily bombed by Russian warplanes. Russia is not able to bomb other areas of the battlefield again because of Ukraine's still extensive uh, inventory of Soviet era air defense systems. So we'll continue watching this unfold this way. These are realities of modern warfare. This is not because Russia is incompetent or unable to wage modern warfare. Again, uh, if the United States was in the situation Russia is in right now, they would be having the same problems. Ukraine is not Iraq 2003. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Uh, check the video description for different places you can find and follow my work. My YouTube videos are automatically uploaded onto Rumble and Odyssey. It might take a day or two, but they'll show up there. Subtitles for my YouTube videos, they are auto-generated. They will show up in a day or two. Please be patient. I know that it's important for some people. Links that I may have referenced while making this video, they'll be in the video description below, as will be ways to help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube channel. Uh, if you see a commercial pop up, feel free to skip it or block it. It's not doing me any good. Uh, if you do want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me a Coffee and also Patreon. And to everyone who has been supporting my work, uh, this is what makes my work possible, whether you're doing one-time donations, month to month, or even if you're just sharing my work with others. That's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.